Hello everyone and welcome back to Dead Secret. Okay, so let's continue with the game. Okay, so in the last episode I found uh, the third of these empty bottles and I also found uh, the safe combination. So I think that what I have to do now is to go upstairs and unlock the safe and hopefully that is where I find the fourth of these bottles. Because I need that to... Um, to do that puzzle with the machine and uh, I think that once I do that I will have a battery for the flashlight and then I will be able to go into into the basement I think that's how it's going to go anyway okay so so the safe was over here uh, hello well, this wasn't here before. Let me just take a look at the goggles, just to, just out of curiosity. Yes, okay. Yeah, the guy isn't over there anymore. The bullard. Okay. Anything in the mirror? No. No, okay. Oh, hold on. Now I remember. There was a page around here somewhere. Yes, there it is. I, I spotted this page in the video, but I missed it uh, when I was actually playing the game. Okay, what is this? Bullard Daily Log, November 2nd, 1964. We did a test run of the, of the idiofocal lenses today. At first, we did not know how to interpret the results, but now I believe they are working better than we had anticipated. Instead of an unfiltered stream of sensory information, what we are seeing is subconscious memory. The lenses distort in response to visual stimuli that the wearer has some knowledge of. They cannot, they see what my conscious mind cannot. Josie proposed that what we are really doing is mining dreams. Dreams are, after all, a form of video focus, a time when the subconscious comes forward and shows us truths that we might not not otherwise recognize what we are striving for is unrestricted access to dream thought as a control mnemonic the mask works pretty well i could tell that josie was dubious at first but now she understands subconscious thought is potentially dangerous subject is potentially dangerous to the subject we will need a physical object to enable the mind to compartmentalize, providing the wearer with some measure of cognitive protection. A permanent augmentation will require a much larger apparatus. We will need some other kind of focus mnemonic to help the brain focus the deluge of dream information it will receive, something large and uh, ubiquitous. The moon, perhaps. Uh, interesting. Very interesting, yes. The lenses in this... M yes, okay. Okay, so, le so, so let's work on the safe, shall we? Uh, yes, I know it's the safe combination, but... Okay. Let's see. Left to 20. Uh, to, I think that... Oh, okay, I get it, I get it, okay. Left 20. Yes, left 20, okay. Right 50. Oh, oh, come on. Right 50, left 10. What am I doing wrong? Okay, hold on, let's try this again. Left 20. Right 50. Left 10. Okay, there we go. And in here we have... Uh, yes. What do we have in here? Okay, nice. We have the last bottle. Get that. Hmm. The letter C is printed on the label. Okay. Very nice. And we have a bunch of papers. The Lunar Dream Apparatus. Altering the brain to achieve permanent idiofocus. William Benjamin Carpenter's work describing the Carpenter effect over a century ago continues to baffle psychologists today. 
we have struggled to understand the linkage between the subconscious mind and the conscious, particularly the ways in which the subconscious mind seems to wield special knowledge of which the conscious mind is unaware. Our research attempt to give the conscious mind unfiltered access to all the information stored in the subconscious by creating an artificial bridge between the two. Oh, hold on. Yes, okay. Our research attempts to give the conscious mind unfiltered access to all of the information stored in the subconscious by creating an artificial bridge between the two. We have done this in a rudimentary way with a set of lenses that refract light by, by tracking alterations in the brain waves. But a more robust connection requires more permanent alteration of the brain. The Lunar Dream Apparatus combines engineering, psychology, neuroscience, and a bit of physics to create just such a connection. In order to give the subject some control over their own subconscious, we have chosen the Moon as a mental mnemotic. After undergoing treatment in the Lunar Dream Apparatus, the subject's conscious and subconscious are merged whenever a full moon is visible. This paper describes the construction of the apparatus, its function, the details of our research, and data recorded from our first test subject, co-author Josephine Herrera. Oh, that is very interesting. That is very fucking interesting. Uh, hold on. If Josephine Herrera tested the machine, could it be that she is the killer? That would, uh, like it, that could be it, that could be it. Okay. This must be what the woodcutter was after, the Luna Dream apparatus. Yes, and we have more papers to read here. Okay. A receipt for services rendered, Martin Construction. Okay, this is nothing special. Okay. Installed steel siding and insulation per specification. Ran electrical for fans and evaporator under floor to connect to main line in basement. Compressor, evaporator, freon tank, and ventilation installed and tested. Replaced standard door handle with locking variety per customer request. Interesting. I wonder if this has something to do with, um, with the dream apparatus. Like, maybe the dream apparatus is controlling a larger chamber in which a person can be transformed into something else. And maybe this is it. Interesting. Uh, Joe, this is the only remaining copy of our research materials. I destroyed the rest. Take this and get out of here. After I'm gone, they'll turn this house upside down looking for answers. Josie, I know about the secret room behind your wardrobe. If you have stashed anything there, you must get rid of it. I've already cleaned out the freezer. Huh. I'm counting on you. Take the files, destroy the machine, and get out of here. Okay, so there's a secret room behind the wardrobe in Josie's room. Let's go there right now. Yeah. Anything else here? Search the basement, freezer. Oh, the basement freezer, okay. And explore Josie's secret room. Anything else here? No. No. Okay. So now we have to go back to Josie's room. You know, I think that I read somewhere that I can actually move faster if I double click. No, it's not really working. Okay, so it's behind the wardrobe. There we go. What do we have here? I can't see shit. Yes, I oh, hold on. Yeah, there's a secret place there. I would like to have the flashlight, but uh, it looks... There seems to be some light over there, so I think I will risk it. Oh, come on, move faster. What's with all the candles?
Come on, come on. Oh, come on, moving so slowly. Yes, it's just a little secret room, okay. Uh, what is this? Whoa, oh, holy shit. Oh, I see. This is a little peeping hole. Very interesting. And there is a monkey on the other side. Huh. Let's do it again. Oh, look at that! The monkey is gone! <laughs> which means that there is someone on the other side. Which kind of sucks for us. Oh, not really. I mean, these monkeys keep moving around. Okay. Uh, can I open this? Dear Diary, I was thinking about that today. I finally got some confirmation from the insurance company, which fills in some blanks. Here's what I know so far. Dad went to war in 1940 to the Philippines. He had some um, minor injury and was discharged in 1944. He was the only member of this of his unit to survive, the rest having died in a submarine. In 1946, his parents' home in Illinois burned down and he turned up to collect the insurance payout. At least somebody did. He didn't have any other, fam other family, and so it must have been him. But after that, I can't find any trace of him. When... Then in 1952, the name Harris Bullard turns up in the footnotes of a research paper from Oakley College. Is this Dad? If so, what was he doing in the years after the war? Maybe he went abroad. Harris Bullard turned up in the footnotes. Okay, so Josie suspects that Harris Bullard is her dad. Is that it? I'm not, I'm not quite sure I get it, but I think that's it. Okay, there are some inconsistencies. Dad studied physics, not neuroscience, and Dr. Harris Bullard of Oakley College seems to have a chemistry background. There couldn't have been two Harris Bullards at the U University of, uh, of Columbia, I can't remember, in the 1930s, could there? Well, actually, well, actually there could be. Okay, the scariest thing for me is that Dr. Bullard looks nothing like the one photo I have of my father. In the photo, his face looks different, and he's not so tall and skinny. Of course, he would have been younger, as the photo was taken before I was born, but maybe it's not that in the photo at all. I changed my major to neuroscience and moved out there with one purpose, to figure out if Dr. Harris Bullard of Gove, Kansas... Is the man who promised to marry Mama in 1939. Whoa, she changed her major just, just because of this. Jesus Christ. Uh, it's been two years and I am still not sure. I don't have the guts to ask him. What if I am wrong? What will that make me? Hmm. Okay. Yes. So Josie suspected that Harris Bullard is her father. Okay, is there anything else for me here? What is this? It's Oh, it's a battery! Fantastic! Fantastic! And Ooh. we have another piece of paper. Okay. Dear Diary, got a letter, got a letter from Herrera today. Yeah. They are good parents, even if they aren't my real parents. They sent the letter to me at Dr. Bullard's address, which means they know I'm living here. I wonder if they are worried. The whole town seems to have decided that the only reason I'd stay here is that I am sleeping with him. I don't care what the small-minded uh, bumpkins around here think, but I hope that the Hereras aren't worried. Maybe soon I can tell them that I am really what I'm really up to. Also, Bobby Sawyer gave me an Another draft of of his novel. It's really weird, but I think it's pretty good. I have been typing up his manuscripts on Dr. Bullard's typewriter. I'm fixing mistakes and making little edits as I go. When he's done, he's going to submit the typed version to Amazing Stories or Worlds of Tomorrow. I hope they publish it. I don't know if magazines will even look at work by a, a black author. I told him to use a pen name. 
Yeah, okay. Tomorrow we run the first live test of the Lunar Dream apparatus. Dr. Bowler doesn't think it's going to work the first time. I hope it does. I volunteered to be the first test subject. Maybe after the treatment I will be able to understand what happened to that. Okay, so the question is, what exactly happened to Josie after the treatment in Lunar Apparatus? That is what I want to find out. Okay, is there anything else here? We got a bunch of pictures. I can't go there. Can I use the... Um, the flashlight? Uh, hold on. No, come on. Click that shit, yes. Come on. Uh. I don't understand how to put the battery in the flashlight. Maybe I actually have to go down to the basement to do that. Maybe. Okay. You know, this would be a really good good place for a jump scare, so I'm kind of expecting a jump scare. Let's see if I'm right. Let's see if there's going to be something waiting for me outside the closet. No. Okay, nothing. That's a bit disappointing. Uh, okay, can I close this? Yes, I can, okay. Okay, so now... Well, I suppose that now I could uh, go back down to the basement. Because now I have uh, the batteries for the flashlight. But I can also go uh, get the leeches and tinker a little bit with uh, the dream apparatus. I think that's what I'm going to do. Man, this character moves so slowly. Move faster, woman. Go, go, move faster. Okay. Let me just take another look at the... Um, hold on a second. Uh, where's the mask? Yes, Bullard is still here, okay. So this is what I'm supposed to do next. Uh, okay, get the bottles. Yes. Yes, I know it's full of leeches. I want to put it in the bottles. Okay, I filled each bottle with a leech. Okay, so now I should be able to do something about the about the dream apparatus machine. Okay. Come on, go there. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can just put these here. Okay, I need to figure out the right order for these bottles. Yeah, okay, okay. I suspect it has something to do with these scales. Hold on. I need to figure out the right order for these bottles. Oh! Oh my god. This is not right. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> okay, can't I start this again? Okay, let's try it again. Maybe this time it will be okay. Yes, okay. <laughs> okay, so I gotta put them from... Uh, okay, before I do this, I have to check out my papers, because uh, I remember reading somewhere a note about this part. Okay, guys, I'm going to do this and I'll record again once I know what to do, okay? Okay guys, I found the relevant piece of paper. As you can see here, Dr. Bullard, I have followed your instructions to calibrate the Tempest Prognosticator. Your concern was correct. The bottles must be placed from heaviest to lightest to produce accurate if to produce accurate results. Okay, set. So they have to be placed from heaviest to lightest. Okay. Uh it may then be used to start. Yes, okay. So, heaviest to lightest.
Okay. I th yes, I think I see how this goes. Okay, so this one is heavier than this one, okay? I think I have to figure out which one is the heaviest. Oh, this one is heavier. This one is heavier. And what about this one? Okay, I think that this one is the heaviest. Let's just try out with this one just to make sure. Yes, that's right. This one is the heaviest bottle. C. Uh, no. What? Oh, come on. That's not what I wanted to do. Okay. Okay, now I'm, now I'm confused. Let me do that again. Yes. Yes. Yes, okay. So this one is the heaviest. Why the... Oh, I get it now. Oh, oh come on! Ah, ah. Fucking interface! Come on! Okay, so this... I don't actually need the bottle of... Oh, for the love of God! Okay, so this one is C. Okay, now I have to figure out which one is the, is the heaviest of the other three. Okay. E. Okay. Now, okay, so C and E are already assigned, okay? Now, now it's just between A and D. Okay, it's A and D. Okay, it's done. Nice. Okay, so now I should be able to put them on this on on this contraption over here. Okay, things are moving. Okay, that did the trick. The moon moved into position. And that thing down there opened. Lunar Dream Approach Calibration. Okay. Hmm. Okay, and uh, okay, I get it now. So I needed two batteries. That's why I couldn't put the other one in the flashlight. Okay, okay, so I put the batteries in the flashlight. It's working again. Nice. Okay, so now I can go into the basement. But you know what, guys? We're going to do that in the next episode. Because I'm going to end this video here. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.